So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna keep talking about optics and in a moment we'll get to lenses. But first I wanna talk about something I mentioned during the homework. So total internal reflection was the case where if we start with Snell's law, and then we set, for example, theta two equal to 90 degrees, then we get and two sine of 90 and one sine theta one. Sine of 90 degrees is one. So you just get this equation. And so the picture for this would be, so I guess, Let's say, for example, you were doing this with water. So here is the water. Up here would be air. And this dashed line is just the perpendicular to the surface of the water. What the total internal reflection tells you is that let's say you were in the water down here, there would be, depending on the different coefficients or the different uh, indices of refraction, there could be a place where you can't see out of the water. So if this angle is 90 degrees, then you can no longer see out of the water. So this is the kind of picture that goes along with the total internal reflection. And the other vocab word that we saw for this was critical angle. So if it says something is at the critical angle, then you set theta equal to 90, and you have a picture that looks like this. Dispersion. And so this is how a prism works. So if you take white light coming in, and then on the other side, you get red. I don't have that many colors, but you get a rainbow on the other side. What's happening is that the, so we've already seen that the index of refraction, which was the lowercase n, depends on the material. but it also depends on the wavelength. So M also depends wait. So in something like a prism, all the light coming in is moving at the same speed. But when it enters the prism, not only is it going to be 
refracted at a different angle theta because of Snell's law. It's also going to be spread out into different colors due to the fact that the index of refraction also depends on the wavelength. And remember, index of refraction was related to the speed that the light was traveling. And so you get the different wavelengths spread out due to different angles and also due to the different colors traveling at different speeds when they exit the, the prism. And so there's not really any calculations here. It's just a conceptual thing. So like the lens in your eyeglasses or contact lenses. So for this class, we're just gonna focus on two types of lenses. have convex lenses. And then concave lenses. So you might also see the convex lenses called converging lens or concave lenses called diverging. And so these are different from mirrors. So we'll come back to mirrors uh, towards the end of class. But so mirrors reflected light, lenses are going to allow light to pass through them. So that's the difference between the two things. So uh, we'll draw each of the way that light behaves when it interacts with these lenses on the next slide. But I think you guys have maybe seen this kind of stuff before. And the mnemonic device to remember this is that concave has the word cave in it. And if you were to imagine like going into a cave, you would need to like go into some hole in the earth. So it would look something like that. So now how does light interact with these different types of lenses? So for the convex lens, and this is where the, the other name for it being converging lens might uh, give you a hint. So if you have parallel, uh, rays of light entering the lens, then they will interact with the lens. And on the other side, the rays will all converge onto a single point. So if this was ray one. Two and three. And they would end up like this on the other side. 
So if you enter through the center of the lens, then you just keep going straight through without being deflected in any way. And then if you enter as a straight line at the edges of the lens, then you'll get refracted at these different angles. Yeah, so number two entered into the center of the lens and then it just passed through as a straight line on the other side. So it didn't get refracted. So like if I had a line here, it would get refracted, or I guess I should start it. It would be like that. So it's just the center line just goes straight through. So basically it, it has to be symmetric on about this line. So because two is right in the middle, it can't like, it needs to just stay on the middle to be symmetric. So the, this point in the middle is called the focal point. And the distance from the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. And it has the variable lowercase f. And so these are called converging lenses because the, the light rays converge on the right-hand side of the lens. Like if the light entered from, so right now the light's entering from the left and focusing on the right-hand side. So the light could enter from the right parallel and then end up on the left-hand side being focused. You can also start with your light being focused and then spread it out so that it's no longer focused on the left-hand side. The way I've drawn it, the light is traveling this way. But these things, like the way that lenses work is everything can happen in the opposite direction as well. So the light could have started at this focused point, started spreading out, and then when it enters the lens, now it becomes parallel. So the concave lens looks like this. And again, if we do three parallel uh, rays of light entering the lens, one, two, three, then again, the two just goes straight through the center again. And then lens one, goes out like that, and so does lens, or ray three. So concave lenses take parallel light and then spread it out on the right-hand side. And so these are called uh, diverging. So if you kind of remember what we did with mirrors uh, with the ray tracing stuff. So I guess as an aside, just a reminder, 
So for the mirror, if this was the mirror and the light bounced off of it like that, we could, and you're, you were looking at it up here, then you could trace the ray on the other side of the mirror and you would be seeing some image down here. So you guys remember that? Okay, so we can do the same thing with this lens, where if we take ray one and do the ray tracing with it, and then ray three as well, Maybe I should drop this together. So now what you see is that the, the focal length is actually, or the focal point is actually over here. So this is the focal point. And that means if you found the focal length F, it's gonna be negative. Well, so it's negative because if we, if we pretend that this is the zero, point, then anything to the right of zero would be positive and anything to the left of zero would be negative. So just to compare the two, so for the converging lens, you have parallel lines coming in and then they converge on the right-hand side for the Concave lens, you have parallel rays coming in. On the right hand side, they spread out. And so then on the left hand side is where you have your focal point. So those are the, the pictures that we're going to use for our concepts. And now there are some. Uh, equations that go along with these pictures. So uh, the first equation, so this is the term is called power, but it's a different power than the one you've seen previously. So this power means uh, so this is more of like a measure measure of the strength of the lens. The unit for power is a capital D. And so this stands for diopters. So if you wear glasses and you know what your prescription is, the number uh, of that prescription is the diopter. And as you can see from the equation, it's inversely proportional to the focal length. And so you'll also remember that the focal length can be positive or negative. Uh, 
and that would just depend on the type of lens it was positive for convex and negative for concave. And so because the focal length can be negative, that means that the power can also be negative. Convex lens first. So you've got your parallel lines coming in and then they focus over here. There's your focal length F. So I guess the first thing that we can think about is Let's say you were looking at a tree over here. If this is ray one, two, and three, then over here, you would get three, two, and one. So the ray that goes for, with the top of the tree would be over here. And then the ray for the bottom of the tree would now be up at the top. So the thing that is the real thing we'll call the object. And then the thing that is not the real thing and is what you would see as a consequence of the lens would be the image. So just like we have a focal length, we also have a distance to the image, which we call di. And then we also have a distance to the object, do. And the relationship between all of these distances is the following equation. So one over the object distance plus one over the image distance has to equal one over the focal length. So this was the picture for a convex lens. And so this same equation is going to apply for both types of lenses, but the picture is going to look different. So let's draw the picture on the next slide. So I'll draw the lens first. And then we can do the same thing with the tree. So 
So again, you get your parallel lines coming into the lens. One, two, three. And on the right-hand side, we saw that they would diverge. So that doesn't seem like it would be very useful. But the focal length is negative. And so you could get an image on this side. Like this. This is the focal point. So this distance is also the first distance would be the lens to the image, which is di. Then you have the lens to the focal point, which is f. And then the distance to the object, which was d0. And so, like I said, the equation still applies. Except now the image is on the same side of the lens as the object is. So people were wondering why like, why are we doing the stuff with the blue lines? Uh, so if, if you imagine your eye was over here, then just like with the mirror, you, uh, your eye just imagines where the lines would have gone on the opposite side of the mirror. And so they're doing the same thing with the lens. So if you're looking through the lens, then your eye, like the way that the ray tracing works is you see the image uh, where it's drawn instead of the original object. So I don't know if that helps clear up why we need the blue lines for the concave lens. So there's three, three cases. If you have a positive focal length, which remember means that it's a convex lens. And the object distance is greater than the focal length. Then you will get a real image. If you have a negative focal length, which we saw from concave lenses, then it doesn't really matter what else is going on. That's going to be a virtual image.
And then there's this other case where you have a positive focal length, so it's convex. But the object is closer to the lens than the focal length, then you will also get a virtual image. And so what it's meant by real or virtual image is, uh, so if we go back to our picture, I'll look. so a real image would basically be if I could put a, like a projector or like a piece of film or something like about, like if you think about how a camera works, light has to hit the film on the camera in order for it to take a picture. So if I were to put film where this real image is drawn, then the film could be developed and you would see that image. With the uh, virtual images, if you were to try to put a piece of photography film where this image is, because that's not where the light travels, you would never get that film to develop this image. Or if you were to put a projector screen where that virtual image is, the projector screen wouldn't show a picture of that image. Um, so then there's, a couple more equations to write down to do with magnification. And so magnification is going to be little m. And if you just take the ratio of the image height. to the object type, you get the magnification. And the other thing that you can do to get magnification is compare the image distance to the object distance. So if we go back and look at our pictures, For this first one, the object or the, so the object is bigger than the real image. So your magnification would be something less than one. But if I had instead uh, drawn what the image would be further away where the rays have dispersed more, then I could get a bigger tree and then the, image would be bigger than the real object. So the magnification would be some number bigger than one. So just depending on the distances involved, you can make images that are bigger or smaller than the original object, which you guys have seen from stuff like microscopes or telescopes where, especially for a microscope, you're something taking something really small that you couldn't see doing this kind of optic stuff to it, and then making it something bigger that you can actually look at. And so these, 
these two equations and then uh, this other one that I wrote down earlier with the distances and the focal length. These three together are called the thin lens equations. So if you see like in a problem that it says a thin lens, that's just telling you that these equations will apply. Uh, if you have something that's not a thin lens, then there would be some other physics going on and we're not gonna do that in this class. <laughs>